Welcome back to another Friday. So recently we talked a little bit about what we have just finished making for the School of Sweet Georgia and what's gonna be coming out soon. But today I'm gonna to talk about what I am going to be making for the school in the next couple of months. And it's all gonna be on this loom. Hey there, thank you so much for being here. My name is Felicia from Sweet Georgia and this is Taking Back Friday. This is a space where we come every Friday and we talk about knitting and weaving and spinning and dyeing. We talk about the fiber arts, we talk about color, and I talk a lot about how important it is to make time to make things. Now, I have been making many, many things. I recently sorted through all of my hand-woven samples and assembled them together and I just am shocked <laughs> at how much stuff I've made over the past year. Um, a lot of these things are hand-woven scarves. A lot of these things were generated by working off of the same template over and over and over again. Um, and seeing how I can take that one template and push it in multiple directions using hand-dyed color, using gradient color, using mixing of colors and optical mixing and all these kinds of things. So taking a very simple weave structure and seeing what can be possible with that through color. So for the most part, for, for all of last year, maybe a little bit of the year before, I have my loom tied up the same way. I have it threaded with a straight draw, 4321, 4321, 4321, all the way across, or yeah, and tied up with tabby, tied up with twill, and I have just been weaving like that for the majority of the year. And now I'm ready to do something completely different. <laughs> Over the winter holidays, you'll know that we had made these advent kits and uh, one of the projects was a weaving project. And so this is the weaving project that came out of the advent 2020 kit. And so this is one that was designed to be all different kinds of twills and it was using all these mini skeins, winding them into stripes in the warp and then using them in the weft and all these kinds of things, seeing how they mix and blend and combine. I had a couple of extra advent kits that I was going to play with. And so what I did was I took the colors that were in this colorway here and I wound them all into balls and then I held all the balls together and then I wound a warp a mixed warp with all of these colors. I don't advise you to do this because it's very messy. The way that I did it was extremely messy and very, very tangled. But at the end of the day, I finally got the warp on this loom. And I didn't really know how I was gonna weave it. I just knew that I wanted to see lots and lots of warp stripes in here. And so I initially started sometime in the holidays, I wove a little bit of plain weave with it, and then I tried a little bit of tutu twill with it, and I was like, none of these things work, none of these things are the way that I want them to be. And uh, combined with a couple of other thoughts and ideas that I had, the first is that since I got this loom, when we assembled this loom um, in October, November, something like that, we assembled this loom from scratch. It was just a whole pile of sticks and we put it together. This is a brand new Leclerc Mira 2 counterbalance loom. And the one that I got, I bought with the shed regulator, which is up here. And so with the counterbalance loom, you can watch the video where I talk about how counterbalance looms work and everything like that, and how they're really, really great for things like balanced weaves, like if you're weaving uh, one and three against two and four, and so it balances out and it's, it's, it's great. But if you're gonna weave something unbalanced, like raising shaft one and then leaving two, three, four behind, it doesn't work necessarily as well because they're not really balanced. They're not balancing each other out. Like these pulley systems are not gonna balance each other out. So that is the purpose of getting this shed regulator here, this little extra bar at the top. It is supposed to help correct that issue. And so I have been weaving plain weave and balanced weaves all year. <laughs> and some of you guys have been commenting and saying, how's the shed regulator? How does it work? Is it, is it good? Is it working? Does it help? And I was like, I don't know yet because <laughs> I haven't used it. <laughs> and so what I decided to do was to, to get this warp off of the loom, uh, I just thought I'd do a little bit of sampling. And so what I did was I changed the, the tie up at the bottom. And so basically I have my treadles tied to just 
shaft one, just shaft two, just shaft three, just shaft four. So if I press on one, then it pulls shaft one down, and then the three are left up. So basically, because I want to get this warp off of the loom so that I can do something different next. I want to do a completely different threading. I want to do a completely different tie-up. I want to just do something completely different. And so to get this warp off of the loom, I just thought I'll just weave this entire warp and make it into samples. Not every single thing has to be a scarf at the end of the day. And so I thought I'll just take this opportunity to try a bunch of different things and see what happens. So what I decided to do is change the tie up of how the treadles are tied to the shafts. So basically what I have here is I have the four treadles in the middle. I've decided to tie them up as shaft one, shaft two, shaft three, shaft four. So shaft one is tied to treadle number one, and then the next one is tied to number two, and the next one is tied to number three, and the next one is tied to number four. So when I step on treadle one, only shaft one comes down, which means that two, three, and four are supposed to go up. But because of the way the pulley system works, it might not necessarily open in the biggest way. It's not gonna produce a really big shed. So I have a little example here of how I have been treadling the loom with no changes to the loom except for the tie up. And so you can see the very small shed that's being made by this unbalanced weave. And so you can see it's so small and so narrow that I actually can't even fit my shuttle through the shed without it like expanding the shed or pushing. Like I have to literally push it through. So that is not gonna work at all. So what the shed regulator does is it actually raises all of this entire pulley system up to give it more space to create that larger shed. So I tried it and it works. It's like magic. It works really, really well. So basically in the shed regulator, there is a little pin that marks how high you want your pulley system to be. And so what I did was I removed the pin and then I twisted the bar so that the pulley system moves upwards uh, I, I moved it up two holes and then I put the pin back in again to hold it all in place. So now that the pulley system is higher up by two pins, when I go and I treadle these exact same shafts, then the shed is significantly bigger. It's big enough to drive a boat through it. I mean, it's, it's really nice and big now. Okay, so let's take a quick minute to talk about what a shed regulator is, what its purpose is, why it was designed, all of these kinds of things. Basically, a shed regulator is something that was created by the Claire Looms for their counterbalance looms uh, to help regulate the size of the shed and make it easier for everyone to weave uh, unbalanced weaves. So basically, if you're looking at, this is a counterbalance loom, and this is the upper roller, and these are the two lower rollers, and each of these two lower rollers is attached to one shaft here, so there's four shafts here. This bar up at the top here, this is the shed regulator, and I'll talk about this in a second. But you can see like with a counterbalance loom, the way that this wants to work best is when this roller moves, it's moving two shafts down, two shafts up, and then like this. So this is one really efficient way of creating a shed with a counterbalance loom. The other way is for these two lower rollers to roll. So either rolling them both in the same direction, so shafts one and three go down, and then when you go the other way, shafts two and four go down, or if, even if you roll it this way, and have one and four go down and two and three go up. So basically every time that you roll these rollers in a really, really efficient way, both in the same direction or opposite directions or however you wanna do them, they're creating a balanced weave. And so it makes a nice big shed opening. Now, what if you think about with these rollers, if you were just to lift just shaft one and then three would go down. It doesn't seem to make a lot of sense. It's not super efficient and it actually doesn't allow for enough distance between these shafts. So like if you look at this, the first roller will, will shift, but then what's the other roller going to do? Because it's kind of just, it's kind of stuck. So now what the shed regulator up here does is it actually is attached to this upper roller system. So this this shed regulator will basically turn, and you can see as I'm turning it, you can see the entire set of shafts is going up, or the entire set of shafts can go down. Okay, so let's look at the two situations in which you might have an unbalanced weave. In one case, you might have one shaft going down, 
three shafts going up. That's one situation in which you might have an unbalanced weave. Another situation is where you have three shafts going down and one shaft going up. So that's the opposite situation. And each one of these situations requires a different adjustment for this apparatus of rollers. When you raise all of the rollers, they can help adjust the shed and make it a bigger shed. Or if you lower <laughs> all of the rollers, that might help also create a big shed, depending on what the situation is. So you can see on the scarf that I'm weaving right now, I'm weaving a twill, it's an unbalanced twill. And what I actually need is just to lower one shaft and have three go up. And so in order to make that happen, the best case scenario is for all of these rollers to go up. I'm gonna treadle all of these and it's just gonna be taking one shaft and moving one shaft down at each time. And the other three are gonna go up. So one, two, three, four. So if I'm only doing that one pattern, what I can do is I can just raise all of these rollers and I have a locking pin here that goes in to the shed regulator and I can basically lock it in place so that it always stays up. Now, if I was doing the opposite and what I actually am gonna be weaving is say, I want three shafts to go down and one to go up or like this, three shafts to go down and one shaft to go up, then what I actually need from my loom is something a little bit different. And what I need is for all of the rollers to go down. And so I could lower the entire apparatus and put a locking pin in there and just keep it at that level. Now the tricky thing is what if you're gonna be weaving something that has both a combination of, uh, you know, these different sheds like three going up and then you want three going down or something like that. In that case, the position of these rollers kind of has to go up and down and up and down and up and down. And so that is where this shed regulator comes in really handy is that it has a tension spring on the back and it can sense what your warp needs at what time. It's kind of amazing. So it senses what your warp needs. And so you can see as I change my treadling, watch the position of this roller. It's gonna go up and down, up and down, depending on what the warp and what the shed needs. Okay, so I'm gonna treadle where I just treadle one shaft, pulling one shaft down at a time. And now I'm gonna treadle one where I'm going to pull three shafts down at one time and watch what happens to this guy. It's going down. So it has self-adjusted itself to position all of the rollers a little bit lower in order to create a big, nice open shed for me. So you can see that happening. The whole roller system is raising and lowering depending on what the shed regulator is sensing. It's kind of magical. <laughs> nice big shed happening here. And then now I'm gonna treadle three shafts down and one shaft up. Again, nice big shed opening. If anybody has any questions about the shed regulator and how it works, it works so simply and it works. So now that I know that this shed regulator can absolutely uh, resolve the situation of having a small shed with these unbalanced weaves, now I feel perfectly confident to move forward with the next project that I want to do on this loom, and that is to weave waffle weave. So waffle weave is something that is very often used for dish towels because it's basically a weave structure where you weave it and it looks flat, and then when you wash it, it just it <laughs> it just compresses up and squishes up and and shrinks up to to look like a sponge almost it becomes a very spongy cloth because all of the way that the floats have been arranged the whole thing kind of just sucks up and becomes an egg carton shape like it becomes all egg cartony in appearance and uh, so Waffle weave is very often used for dish towels because those little holes and gaps makes it very um, um, absorbent. It helps to absorb. Yeah, it makes it more absorbent. So with weaving, I feel like you can weave things that are sort of for your kitchen, like kitchen towels, dish towels. You can weave placemats, you can weave table runners, you can weave tablecloth if you wanted to. Um, if you want to weave things for your bedroom, you can weave, you know, 
bedspreads and pillowcases and things like that. You can weave bath towels, you can weave bath mats, you can weave rugs, you can weave all these things. And then on the other side of it, then there's weaving things that are wearable, like scarves and shawls and yardage for making garments and things like that. Now, waffle weave seems to be one of those things that is very often used for dish towels or kitchen stuff. But I saw it used um, in these very expensive, luxurious cashmere scarves that were wool woven by Wallace and Sewell, which is a sort of like a design team that makes hand, makes woven, woven garments, woven accessories, and they're based out of the UK. And I saw them many, many, many years ago. I just, I was wandering a neighborhood and stumbled into their store, which was just left such an incredible uh, impression on me all these years. And so I saw them use waffle weave in scarves that were so beautiful, like lamb's wool scarves that had just, you know, washed and fulled and become this egg carton look. And so this egg carton texture to the cloth is great because it's very insulating. It traps air in all of those pockets makes for a very, very warm scarf. And I've always wanted to try to weave this. Now, waffle weave is uh, an unbalanced weave. There are some, some picks where you're gonna have to raise only shaft one, some that's only two, some that's one and three. So it's all a little bit all over the place. And so I wasn't sure, oh, would it be a good idea, but it's a good experiment to try working on that kind of unbalanced weave on this counterbalance loom. Now, the first thing that I wanna do is to weave waffle weave dish towels because I do have a lot of leftover 8-2 cotton on hand that I wanna sort of go through. And so one of the things that I want to do with this waffle weave is to do kind of like another color experiment, basically looking at those egg carton shapes and uh, accentuating the depth of that texture with color. So I'm gonna show you. <laughs> I'm gonna show you the colors that I have picked out for this waffle weave idea that I have in my mind. Everything looks great in my mind and then it's just a matter of actually doing it and then seeing how it actually turns out. But I have in my mind an idea that with these waffle weave cells, you know, each box becomes kind of like a sunken cell. <laughs> so with each of these waffle weave cells, what I want to do is I want to have the the edges of that cell be lighter in color, and then as you go deeper into the hole of that egg carton shape, have the center be the darkest part. So it's like even making that um, making that cav cavernous space even more cavernous. So I want to outline all of the cells with a color like this. And this is some leftover uh, cotton. This is 100% cotton. This is the stuff from Louette, organic cotton. And then the next color into that sort of cell would be these two balls of lime green. And then the next one, even deeper into that, would be these two colors. These are two, I'm not entirely sure what colors they are. I got them, they're from Maurice Brassard. They are 8-2 cotton as well. They're not the same color, but I thought that I would just kind of mix and blend the two of these together because I have them. This is all kind of leftover from various other projects that I thought I was going to make. And then finally, the center of these cavernous egg carton shaped holes, I'm gonna put this dark navy in there. So this is also a two cotton from Maurice Brassard. So that's my general idea around these dish towels is to make kind of like a gradient cell waffle weave dish towel. <laughs> So now coming back to what's actually on the loom right now, I am just weaving it off with a uh, one over three twill. And uh, that allows me to see more of my warp yarn on one side. I think that this, this structure is actually working perfectly for what I wanted to do for this particular warp. I wanted to see all the colors in the warp and not having them blend too much. And so when I'm using this one over three twill, it only tacks down, you know, once every four picks. And so what I'm seeing is I'm seeing more of the warp color, seeing less of the weft color on one side. Then when I flip the fabric over, then what you're seeing is mostly weft color and less warp color. So it's kind of like a two-faced fabric. Really cool, very interesting. So I'm just gonna weave all this off and I'm gonna try different textures, different yarns. I have some mohair and silk yarn still. Uh, try different weights of yarn, see what happens. And it's just going to be a sample. Cause sometimes you need to sample and you need to experiment to see what's gonna work, what's not gonna work. 
So that is basically it for today. I'm really excited about being able to move forward, try some different things, new threading. Waffle Weave uses a point threading. It's gonna have different tie up. It's gonna be an unbalanced weave. Looking forward to, you know, moving this warp off of the loom so that I can start something completely different for this year. So that is basically it for today. I can't wait to get this project off the loom so that I can start the next project. I would love to hear about what you are weaving, if anything is on your loom. If you're curious about uh, any of the things that we have been weaving in the school, or if you'd like to see me weave something that uh, I haven't woven before, let me know in the comments if there's something that you think that I should explore, if especially with color that we haven't done before. There's so many things to do. <laughs> There's so many ideas and so many things that I wanna weave this year. So I'm just ready to get going. <laughs> Thank you so much for being here. If you like this episode, please do hit the like button. And if you would like to see more content like this, please do hit subscribe. And we come here almost every Friday to talk about the fiber arts. We talk about knitting and weaving and spinning and dyeing. We talk about color and things that make us happy. Thank you so much for being here. I will see you in the next one. All right, bye for now.